Who are the best friends, the best duos, the best buds, the best brohams, the best friends, and the best pals in the DC universe? It's time to find out on a new Geek History Lesson. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Friendly Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to the Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or duo from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And since Jason and I are such good buddies... You're my best friend. And uh, you are my best friend. Queen reference. Uh, sure. I don't know. That's a Queen song. If You're you my say best so, friend. You know how many Queen songs I know? Maybe one. Well, I know what your favorite Queen song is. Uh, do you? Who wants to live oh, no. forever? <laughs> That's a, a special joke for our uh, Mind University Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> friends. It's going to be the all Queen episode. Um, Welcome to the Geek Hushle Lesson on Queen. Queen, yes. <laughs> and uh, we really miss Bohemian Rhapsody boat on that, but we're here to do it anyway. Uh, but also because we did a Marvel Comics duos, mm-hmm. we thought we would do the answer with the DC Comics duo. Well, this was suggested by somebody, though, It actually. was. We do have a TA. It is Jules Brown, I'm assuming is how you spell your last name. I'm sorry if it's wrong. B-R-O-U-N. You're, uh, you're amazing. Thank you so much for requesting this episode and for typing out all the notes in the back. You're great. Now, we have to clarify what this means, because I could imagine that somebody's come along this podcast and they're looking at our title, mm-hmm. Best DC Comics Duos. And they're like, what is that? Ashley, what is it? A DC Comics duos, or at least the rules rules. that we are implying for this episode, um, is that they are a pairing that is not romantically involved. We Mm -hmm. actually already have a lesson on the best DC Comics couples. You can go and check that Mm -hmm. out. Um, And we are tabling Batman and Robin since they are obviously automatically just for their influence in pop culture going to be taking the number one spot and we didn't feel that including them in our list was fair but if you do want to know why we think batman and robin are so amazing that is going to be the topic of our geek history lesson extra patreon exclusive podcast yes which you can find at patreon.com slash jawin j-a-w-i-i-n where you know people can support us become a member and get Mm -hmm. lots of exclusive podcasts so that's yeah that's going to be the lesson of our extra podcast over there let's Talk about this real quick. Yeah. If we didn't have the Batman and Robin rule, mm-hmm. Ashley, yeah. is Batman and Robin number one? For sure. Yeah, it would have been my yeah. number one easily. Duh. <laughs> and then I think we would have debated like which Batman and Robin team I think so. would have been number one. Yes, because I think there are some interesting arguments to be made for different pairs. Yes, yeah, so I think it was a good idea for us to take them out of the running. So technically this is two through six, but yeah. we're, you know, we're doing... But we're going to be one through yeah. five. <laughs> so yeah, no romantic relationships. No. Uh, they can be familial. If, sure. if mm-hmm. they want, a, you know, a father, son, a brother, sister, a mm-hmm. sister, sister, uh, because there are a lot of great father, daughter, father, son duos yeah. in the Marvel Universe. But the DC Universe, DC, Universe, excuse me. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes the Marvel Universe. we should do the top five duos of the Amalgam Universe. Uh, that would be fun. Would it? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. It's going to be Dark Claw and Super Soldier. Then it's gonna be oh uh, the Punisher Spider that, Boy that Punisher and Wonder Spider Boy and team. Iron Lantern bullets and bracelets bullets and bracelets as number three yes uh, which is a Magneto and all his magnetic men all his metal men are, are number <laughs> you know four what? that's a really good that is a good uh, one. that's a really good amalgam comic actually and then I think obviously obviously the last one is Spider Boy twenty ninety nine and. Uh, I can't pull another one from the Amalgam. <laughs> I read all the of, of Amalgam last year um, for Major Spoilers podcast, and I know people have requested that we talk about it here. I'm sure we will get around to I it at it. some time. I love it. Uh, here's my hot take. Less than 50% of it is good. <laughs> uh, you better bag up off there, Ashley. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, talking about best friend things, yeah, Ashley... Yeah. Um, you're my best friend for the uh, length of this episode. Only for the length of this episode. Well, we'll see how well you do. Damn you, Jeremy Skinner. <laughs> who, who will listen to this at some point? Um, <laughs> Hi, Jeremy. We love you. <laughs> yes. Well, let's, hop, let's hop into the number five. Yeah, let's. And, uh, you know, I will be judging all of your choices. Oh, I have no doubt. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how strong our duo is after this episode. But okay, we'll see if we're still best friends at the end of this episode. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing the Marvel Comics one, so I'm I'm excited to hear your choices for this. So what is 
your number five best DC comic duo, secretly number six. My number five is Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Oh, good choice. Thank you. Um, I know one of our rules was that we were not going to include romantic partners. However, Highly, Harley and Ivy are not main continuity canon romantic partners. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only been confirmed in Elseworlds or in stories like Injustice. So I'm I, counting them as a duo. I will allow it. Thank you. I will allow it. Yes. Um, but it is a little bit of mental gymnastics because in my head canon, they are definitely girlfriends. Well, <laughs> there is a couple on my list or mm-hmm. a duo on my list that in certain versions There's, has been. I actually have two that in mm, certain versions are romantic. Has romantic. Well. But in the main version, yeah. they're not. Yes. So, yes. Uh I, we will allow. Thank judges, you. we will allow. Thank the judges you. Thank rule. you so much, GHL judges. Uh, if anyone wants to pitch us who the, will be on the panel of GHL judges, please find us at GHL Podcast. Man, we are going all over the place on this one. Um, I think Harley and Ivy are super fun together. I think they make a really entertaining pair, like when they kidnap Bruce Wayne and go shopping in the Holiday Nights Batman animated series Written episode. by Paul Dini. Yes, um, which was later adapted into a comic. They balance each other out really nicely, and together they actually make a really intelligent criminal team like in the Gotham City Sirens book where they work with Catwoman you can see how they actually feed each other really well and their relationship makes both women want to be better in order to most help the other person like we see in Injustice and I believe this relationship is exclusively a product of the animated series it is. and then it, everywhere else is sort of adapted yes it. in the animated series you actually see them because they're working together for a while and they just drew them in the same bed together. It's very, it's not sexual. It's very casual, but the implication of sharing a bed with someone is obviously there. And I think the rest of the world was just like, this is great. Mm-hmm. Why not this? I mean, the implication of that, you just like snuggling, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, I, don't you're, you're I, there, don't I don't know. I don't know where you're going. You're with there that. for emotional support. That's right. <laughs> um, lately in contemporary continuity, I think they've been really underused as a pair. And I think there's a lot of great story potential there, which could still be mined. Uh, and while I do, like I said, I prefer them as a romantic partnership. I just want more of them as a team. Sometimes they also like to use that to pit them against each other or they like to use Harley's infatuation with the Joker to put these two at odds. And that always makes me kind of mad. I think they're stronger together. I think they're super, super fun. Um, and I wanted to be sure to include some ladies on my team. So when I was making my list, they jumped to mind immediately. Great. And uh, this way I don't have all heroes on my team. I have some people of questionable morality. <laughs> so Harley and Ivy is my number five. Jason, what is your number five? Well, I, comics, I put some people of morality issues on my list as well. My number five is a duo that you probably would never have considered. Hal Jordan and Sinestro. Oh, I would not have considered them, but I think that is a great choice. They are my number five. Now, Hal Jordan popped up onto my list several times, and it was the idea of, like, who was I going to pair Hal Jordan with? Was I going to pair him with Oliver Queen, the the hard-traveling heroes? Mm -hmm. Was I going to pair him with his partner, Jon Stewart? But at the end of the day, the Hal Jordan stories that really resonate to me are the ones that his friendship with Sinestro is put to the test. Not now, the one where he's a pilot? <laughs> well, he, I'm a pilot. That's an old Hal Jordan joke. Go listen to that geek history lesson. That's like a six-month old. Uh, so joke. for me, mm-hmm. the idea of this is that they started as mentor-mentee. Like Sinestro mm-hmm. was his immediate training officer. Sinestro did not like Hal Jordan. And over the course of several years, they became best friends, which is interesting because that actually happens in reality a lot, where you're trained by somebody and then you become their best friend, like you earn the respect and you become their friend. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because how Jordan is the one who initially turns in Sinestro to the Guardians Mm -hmm. of the Universe. I wanted to say Guardians of the Galaxy. I know that's not correct. But the Guardians of the Universe, it's Hal who has to turn his best friend. He has to reveal to the Guardians that Sinestro uh, from Green Lantern Corps has taken over his home planet of Korrigar and he has become a dictator on that planet. And it is heartbreaking. There is even a moment in that story where Hal Jordan has to decide, do I turn in my best buddy slash friend? Also, 
maybe this is the way that I thought of this list. A lot of times for me, these characters, these choices I made for this best DC comic duos were friends. Like mm-hmm. I, that, the familial, mm-hmm. the friendly relationships. And especially when you track Hal Jordan and Sinestro to the New 52 storyline, where Hal Jordan has had his ring taken away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sinestro gives him his ring because he knows that Hal, even though he hates Hal at this point, Sinestro has created the Sinestro Corps, but Sinestro realizes that Hal is the best guy to have in his corner. Mm-hmm. And in the final issue of the Jeff Johns run, I have talked about this moment on the GHL podcast before. Uh, there is a panel where uh, um, I am going to give it to Ashley to share. Yep, making a note. Uh, so Hal will never, he refuses to give up on Sinestro, even though Sinestro is possessed by Parallax and they're having this giant battle against Volthoom. And in the end, after Sinestro has murdered the Guardians of the Universe, Sinestro's getting ready to leave and Hal snops Sinestro and goes, were we ever truly friends? And Sinestro goes, how the tragedy is that we'll always be friends. That's the kind of moment that reminds me of uh, the the Nightwing and Batman moment that you like to bring up where like, were the good times really good? They were the best. Were the old times really yeah, good? They yeah. were the best from Infinite Crisis. So this to me, ever since that, I've been like, oh yeah, you have to look at these two characters as that Sinestro is not the mustache twirling villain. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hate you, Hal, Sinest- Hal Jordan. Um, you have to look at them as they were partners. They it, were perfect partners and now they become perfect enemies. It's important too because uh, this relationship in particular helps to humanize Hal a lot during his real douchey era yes. of being a Green Lantern. Um, and their relationship is one of the more interesting ones in the Green Lantern universe. So I thought that was a great choice. Yeah, so I, like, I know many people would not consider them to be a duo, but like for me you cannot have Hal Jordan's story without Sinestro's story, and Sinestro is Hal's best villain, and the reason why is because they were friends. Very cool. So there you go. So before we move into our number four, everybody, we have to make sure that we have enough food to pay GHL intern Brego the Cat so he has enough food to eat. And yes. we're going to do that by thinking our sponsor, Wix. Now, if you don't know what Wix is, Wix, we've talked about it several times, they sponsor the podcast several times. My website is built through Wix. Uh, They are a website that allows you to build a professional website any way you want. You can use their sophisticated technology to build advanced web applications. You can build robust websites, beautiful websites, exotic websites with web apps, and everything is SEO compatible that you make on their website. That's important because what is SEO, Ashley? Search engine optimization. It helps people find you on the internet. That's right. It helps Google find your website, and you want to do that because you want your website to be SEO compatible compatible and Wix lets you do it. It's a great place. It's very easy. Over 140 million people, including me, use Wix for their website and you can start and publish your website for free right now. Nice. If you want some of the other features, like you got to like, you know, there's, there's of course like premium options. Mm-hmm, you got to mm-hmm, upgrade mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. bit. Like if you want certain types of things for your stores, you want certain videos, but right out the gate, you don't have to pay Wix anything. And you can get started now by going to Wix.com. That's W-I-X dot com slash podcast to get 10% off. That's Wix.com slash podcast. And thanks to Wix for sponsoring Geek History Lesson and feeding GHL intern Cat Brega. Yes. All right. Let's move on to number four, Ashley. Okay. Who is the number fourth best DC comic duo? My number four best DC Comics duo, I don't think you will be surprised by, but I think perhaps some of our GHL listeners might be surprised by. Batman and Robin. <laughs> Are you going to guess that every time? <laughs> Probably. Um, it it involves a Robin. Clayface and Mud. Mm, no. <laughs> Should it be <laughs> Clayface and Catherine? No. I, the I, uh, no I the little Clayface breakoff. No, I just I went for the, the, the lowest common denominator joke. Yes. Clayface and Mud. Um, mine is the Super Sons. Oh, Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne. That's right. You put Damian Wayne on (laughs) whoop, 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 whoop. The GHL alarms are going off right now. He just woke up the intern. (laughs) The the fans right now are going insane. (laughs) Ashley Victoria Robinson, noted (laughs) hater of Damian Wayne, put Damian Wayne on. On her list. Mark this down in the history books. <laughs> They're going to be talking about this in the the halls of Greece for thousands of podcasts. years. <laughs> um, Damian Wayne made a... Holy <laughs> good God. Yeah. Um, the Super Sons are the duo that I didn't know that I needed. 
Uh, like I said, fans. That's of- a that's a great subtitle, by the way, for their comic, the duo you never knew you needed. Well, you know what? DC can hire me to write them at any time. I will DH Jonathan again so fast. Fans of this podcast uh, do know how much I do not care for Damian Wayne, but I've been softening to him a little bit since DC Rebirth. Um, I think the Titans book did a really good job at balancing his personality, making him less of a complete butthead. Um, and along with sort of Damien's softening, the Rebirth introduced Jonathan Kent, and he's a character that... That I didn't really think I particularly needed. I was like, do we need another Superboy? Do I care about Lois and Clark's son? Uh, and it turns out that I really do. And even though uh, they were initially brought together to basically echo the world's finest relationship that their fathers share, um, I think that the original Super Sons run has turned into something so special and so unique. And the omnibus is amazing. It's stunning. Um, By having John be younger but stronger and taller and more powerful and Damien be older, smaller and more intelligent, they're forced to rely on each other to get out of the tough situations that they've thrown themselves into because they're stupid kids who just want to live up to what their dads are throwing down. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact that both characters have shown immense growth in their partnership because they're little boys, there's still a lot of room for like dumb jokes and petty fights, which always my top two are very well balanced characters that work well together, but are also like kind of dumb and sort of slap each other around. So this is the beginning of a little bit of a trend in the types of duos that I like. But the Super Sons at their best not only reflect where they come from, but they show you why this type of relationship works, why it's important, and how you can put a different spin on it. And they're characters that, I mean, we are someday going to get an Elseworlds tale where Damien is Batman and John is Superman, and we're going to see what that relationship looks like. But seeing them as children and seeing them be able to revel in and celebrate how magical it is to be a superhero in a way that their fathers just can't anymore, the way sort of the current climate is around superheroes, is something that really sets them apart from the rest of the universe. And everyone who comes into their sphere, um, like nobody and um, and any of their supporting characters. Maya Ducard. uh, She's also really awesome. Mm -hmm. Like anyone who comes into their sphere also gets caught up in that same energy. And the Super Sons, when they're working together, they make me happier than any other duo that's currently operating in the DC universe. So when we were making our list for this, they immediately made my short list and I knew I was going to include them. Oh, interesting. The Super Sons did not make my list. Oh, no. Oh, they are really good. They're, that's a good, solid argument for them. Thank you. I think I just think they're so special and they're so cute. Mm-hmm. They should be young forever. All right, Jason. They should. What is your number four best DC Comics duo? My number four are two lovely ladies that are very powerful, very smart, and for me, two birds of a feather. I'm talking about Batgirl slash Oracle and Black Canary. Shut up. They're on my list. (laughs) Uh, Because of the birds of prey. Uh, And I'm going to lean more towards Oracle than Batgirl, even though like the modern birds of prey is Batgirl. Because to me, I fell in love with these two characters through birds of prey. So the reason why I put them on this list is because I kind of think that Barbara Gordon as Oracle, as Batgirl never sometimes gets a fair shake from the DC universe. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of characters just shuffle her off as a Robin. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, you're one of Batman's boys. Okay, whatever, you know. And they call her a boy even though she's a girl. That's wrong. But anyways, um, I think Dinah is one of the first people in the DC universe to actually give Barbara a fair shake. And also, I think Dinah is one of the first characters because when they were put together in that title by Chuck Dixon... Oracle was just sort of Batman's IT help, Mm -hmm. and Dinah really got to know her through the Birds of Prey. To me, they have a very complex relationship. They're almost foils for each other because Dinah is just like Green Arrow. She's passionate. She's idealistic. And then Barbara's very much, I mean, she's a librarian. She's by the books. She's analytical. Yes, which actually kind of makes them great teammates and friends. And if you've never read it, you should definitely check out the Search for Oracle storyline. So good. It's where Dinah, Dinah at this point, I think it's like in the late 20s or early 30s of issues of Birds of Prey. Dinah has not met Oracle face to face Mm -hmm. at this point, and she rushes to Gotham to pull uh, Barbara out of the harbor. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time that they meet each other in each other's arms where, like, she, Dinah, saves Barbara's life. Uh, They are, to me, the strongest female female relationship in 
the DC universe. It's these two. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had to be on this list because of Birds of Prey. If you've never read Birds of Prey, go read Birds of Prey. For God's sakes. The Chuck Dixon stuff. Yes. The new stuff's good. The Chuck uh, Dixon Batgirl stuff, and the Birds of Prey is, is my favorite version of Batgirl being a member of the team because she's mostly just operating like Oracle. Um, they're my number three. Oh, so um, oh, so we're going right into it. Uh, yeah, you, well, okay, we might well, as well, okay, right? Well, okay, uh, Ashley. So, who's your number three? Uh, uh, Barbara Gordon and uh, Dinah Drake Lance. Mm-hmm. Nice, <laughs> Drake Lance Queen. Wow, surprising. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. Are you shocked? <laughs> you call her Queen. I love that. Well, in my yeah, in my head canon, they should be. Married. They're married. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. They're married. Also, Babs and Dick are married. Fight me. Um, <laughs> I also think they're interesting because at face value, like you pointed out, they're very different. Like Dinah's mm-hmm. all passion and drive and Babs is all um, forethought and analyzing. But they share like mind uh, and body even. That, mm-hmm. is not, that just came to me. Very so. smart. Very mm-hmm. smart. Um, they also share a lot of um, martial arts training and a passion for that. Um, they both think strategically, but in different ways. Like Barbara's a planner, but in the field, Dinah's able to think on more of a three, honestly, like more of a masculine playing field. Mm-hmm. Um, and this allows them to use their smaller size against their worst enemies and their smaller team size. The Birds of Prey obviously can't do what the Justice League does, and they're not built to take on threats of that same level. But the Birds of Prey are a pretty formidable team yeah. in the DC universe. And the fact that they're led by these two young women is really, really cool. And I like that they share a genuine friendship, even though, at least in the Chuck Dixon run, when they're sort of first set up, it does come out of this like Oracle Barbara keeps Oracle pretty close to the vest for a long time Dine is one of the first people outside the Bat family that she opens up to Mm -hmm. but their friendship does become very personal and it's really nice to see two female characters that have each other's back on and off the field that's something that we're only getting to a discourse around in fiction now of like female characters being supportive of each other rather than being rivals and it could have been so easy for like Batgirl and Black Canary to have been set up as rivals and I like that they come together to be a team like they very rarely squabble over a major issue if they have a fight it's always really small and if they're working with other team members they're the two who will like go to another room and resolve it like Helen is usually the one who wants to have it out with someone well in that's the what room. they they later do in Birds of Prey and they did in the DC Rebirth Birds of Prey is they introduce Huntress as the one that they both sort of have to control yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but I would love to see I would love to see more of them outside of the Birds of Prey realm but I just don't quite know what that looks like mm-hmm. um, and I I think they're I just think they're really cool. Like they're two characters that I really like. So I enjoy the fact that they have a functional friendship type and, and working relationship. Yeah. So I think that's cool that you put them on your team or on your list. Does it surprise you? It does surprise me, honestly. Ah, so interesting. There you go. You, right. you got one over on me. All right. Well, um, tell me your number three, and hopefully it's not my number two. <laughs> my <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> my number three. Are two buds, but two buds that a lot of people like to make them hate each other a lot. Uh So there's a lot, there's almost as many stories where they're buds as there is as many stories where they fight. Where they're unbuds? Where they're unbuds, (laughs) yes. But I like to call them fine, world's finest. I'm calling Batman and Superman my number three. Batman and Superman, not on my list. Well, to me, I came down to the argument of, do I put the Super Sons on here, Uh or do I put Batman and Superman on here? And while I love the Super Sons, if you've ever read the Superman, Batman, I'm talking about the original one, not the Batman, Superman one, the Superman, Batman series that they did where they had them team up and it ran for like 100 issues, Uh it's great. It's really good. And I do come down on the side that they are superheroes, Mm -hmm. or they've been friends. They're superhero friends. They've been pals since the 40s. They were in a giant title called World's Finest because they are the world's finest superheroes. And you talk about two heroes that have figured out that the other person is just as good mm-hmm. at their idea. Like the whole reason why Injustice, the Injustice video game, the Injustice comic book series works is because these dudes were friends. And because it's sad to see them as opposed enemies. in such a way. Yes. And there's several points in that storyline in the comic book series and the video game where these two guys stop mm-hmm. because they're friends. Mm-hmm. Because they're friends. And that's the reason why the whole DC universe falls apart if these two dudes, the originals, yeah. fall apart. Um, I Again, it's just to me, you cannot, they are the world's finest. Like that app is so, is so, and, and to be honest with you, 
they came very close to being my number one. Not only because, again, that Superman Batman series is so good Mm -hmm. with so many different writers. It's so good. And because World's Finest ran for over for decades yeah. it ran it ran so long but these dudes again there's the idea that they are they they have huge mutual respect for each other mm-hmm. like they see that the other person is just as valuable which is really cool um they are perfectly the opposites of work together i think they're more friends than they are enemies a lot it is the more common thing since frank miller and the dark knight to make them enemies mm-hmm. but i honestly think they are more friends than they are enemies and you know as much as I love the Dark Knight Returns where Superman is the ultimate enemy of Batman I don't know how I feel about that fight Mm -hmm. and to be honest with you I almost think the ending of that storyline spoilers for a story that came out in 1985 when when Batman fakes his death Mm -hmm. and Superman comes to his funeral Mm -hmm. and at the very end Superman hears Bruce's heartbeat Mm -hmm. because Bruce faked his death Superman just winks at Robin and walks away. To me, I'm like, oh, see, he only did that because they're They're friends. friends. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have dug up the grave and strangled him. Yeah, or he would have punched Carrie and been like, why did you lie to me? Yes, (laughs) that's injustice. Like, you saw in Injustice in the Injustice comic book series by Tom Taylor, at one point, Superman breaks Batman's back just like Bane. He's like, ah! There's you know? also in Injustice, there's that great moment with Mom Pa Kent where they're like, oh, he's not her son anymore. Yeah. But uh, Superman and Batman, the world's finest, definitely, definitely on this list as my number three. And you'll see. Interesting. Um, I don't think you're ever going to predict my number one. But okay. my But my number one is very, very obvious. Again, like I said, I lean down on friendships. Mm, my number one I knew was going to be my number one right away. As soon as we made the Batman and Robin decision, I knew exactly who it was going to be. I think I, I, I have a nice feeling about who your number one is. Okay. But we need to learn who your number two is. <laughs> Ashley. You are number two. <laughs> I am number two. Who is your number two? My number two um, are two characters that I'm very fond of and I've actually come to enjoy as a duo and um, appreciate the relationship of more since I met you, Jason, and have uh, been reading things of your recommendations. Uh, Mr. Mixel Spitlick and Batmite. (laughs) You know that Mr. Mixie will never make it on my list. If he ever makes it on a list of anything other than the worst villains of all time, uh, that is a cry for help. Please send dogs. Please rescue me. (laughs) That's my code word. You gotta read some Mixie stories, man. I don't like him. My number two are Wally West and Kyle Rayner. Whoa, they're (laughs) really high. Yeah. um, I'm gonna say right now, they are... Almost made my list, but they're not on my list. Okay, well, I'm sure we're going to talk about our also rants yes. uh, at the end of this. But uh, most of my love for them obviously comes from the Grant Morrison JLA era stories. Kyle and Wally were brought on as relative newcomers to the Justice League. Kyle's the new Green Lantern to replace Hal. Wally's new Flash to replace Barry. Um, initially, they don't like each other, which I think is really they interesting. They hate each other. Um, Because they're both like, no, I know what I'm doing and you don't and you suck. But they soon become really fast friends. They are able to train together and lean on each other in order to outstrip their predecessors in my relationship. uh, In my relationship, in my opinion, I think they're both better than the men that they replaced as human beings and as heroes. That's just my opinion. If you love Hal and uh, Barry, awesome. Plus, they're super funny together. There's a great scenes where they're smack talking Batman and Superman behind the leader's backs, um, which might not be an ideal way for superheroes to comport themselves, but it makes for some really amazing scenes. And it speaks to it's a nice shorthand to show you how quickly these two have bonded and how much they really need each other to lead on to be like, oh, we're the rookies, but that's okay. We're still worthy. We're so good at our jobs. Um, I think when they're talking smack about Batman, they're playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots. No, that's when they're talking about Superman. Oh, okay. Because uh, uh, they're talking with, about Superman. Which Kyle's made from his ring. Because at the time, Superman had long hair, and, and they're he, making fun of it. And then Electric Superman shows up. Walks by, yeah. And you find out that Superman heard them. Yep. So Superman's like, oh, what do you think of my haircut, Kyle? And Kyle's like, uh, it's good. And then he's like, oh, my God, I hope he doesn't fire me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they And that's a scene that you wouldn't get from any other Green Lantern and any other Flash. They're also playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Robots with Kyle made it with his ring. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, well, because Kyle also makes the best constructs because he's an artist. Um, Can I go back to a point that you made? Sure. So you said that you think that Wally and Kyle outstripped their predecessors, Mm -hmm. and I agree with you on that. And I will say that those both happen kind of in Grant Morrison's run because Wally 
it's sort of said that Wally's the first Flash to ever go faster than light speed. Yep. And then Kyle is the first Green Lantern to ever beat the color yellow. Yep. So to me, they do beat both their predecessors, but they're they're Wally at this time had sort of been Flash since Christ on Infinite Earth. So it's yeah, not, he's been Flash for like. A, you know, almost a decade in, in real time. Yeah, uh, in comics time, they kind of make it seem like he's been Flash for maybe like three to four years. Uh-huh. But Kyle is brand, brand new. new. Like yeah. it was like last month when he starts Justice League. But but, but mm-hmm. for the reason why is is it's not so much that Kyle is definitely the rookie of the team. Oh, absolutely. But Wally's not the rookie of the team because he's been around the block. Wally is more the idea that. He doesn't like that Kyle has replaced Hal, and mm-hmm. to him, to Hal Jordan to Wally is Uncle Hal because Wally and uh, Hal mm-hmm. and Barry were best friends. And, but, but 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 before uh, Wally was the rookie, so he's just he's sure. only like right above Kyle. They're still the yes. two youngest. They're members still of the two youngest. But I, but I also as well the interesting thing is that you can read in interviews post that Grant Morrison has said that this is his favorite relationship. Of the entire book is Kyle and Wally. Oh, that's nice. And that he specifically made the request where he was like, I want to make them best friends. Um, I also think they deserve so much credit for revitalizing two titles and two characters that nobody cared about at the time. Like the reason that they got rid of these legacy characters mm-hmm. is because nobody they weren't selling. They, nobody cared. I know that they've gone on to be really impactful. I know that they've been brought back and had these amazing storylines. And we look back at these two characters with a lot of love. But that's why they were replaced. Um, and Kyle Rayner and Wally West made Green Lantern and made Flash cool and relevant and interesting again. Yep. They made them worthy additions to the Justice League. And I don't think that that should be ignored just because we look back at the progenitors through rose colored glasses or because we've enjoyed updates of these characters that co opt these characters' personalities. Barry Allen, but that's. TV Barry Allen. But that, well, also comics Barry Allen oh, now. Okay. Um, but that's. Fine. Um, it's also a big deal when they are invited up to the big leagues because they are some of the first legacy characters to be allowed to play as equal members of the mm-hmm. Justice League. And then that sets a precedent for like Nightwing showing up on the Justice League, Cyborg being added to the Justice League, um, and then a diversification of the team. So also I think what they represent just in the larger scope of uh, the types of teams and the types of characters that we're allowed to see play with the big kids is pretty important as well. I'm also going to say this. Mm-hmm. Kyle Rayner and Wally West's Justice League, the Grant Morrison JLA, the best and most powerful version of the Justice League. I would agree with that for sure. Like you cannot beat that Justice well, League. Well, super gods, you know. Yeah, there, it's basically the Pantheon is yeah. what that was, yeah. Uh, but I think they're great, so they are my number two. Oh, interesting. Did not make my list. Boo. What's your number two? My number two is a little bromance that I would call Blue and Gold. Mm. Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, Michael John Carter and Ted Cord. Now, this these characters started, of course, uh, Booster Gold created by Dan Jurgens. Blue Beetle was a charlatan character that was later turned into Night Owl and Watchmen. But these characters first got to know each other in the 80s on Justice League and International in the Keith Giffen series where they were used as the comedic foil. And they remained best friends all the way into the early thousands when the early aughts, excuse me, when Blue Beetle was killed during Infinite Crisis. And it became Booster Gold's duty to basically find the next Blue Beetle and led to him finding uh, um, Jaime Reyes. Mm -hmm. So... It's interesting because these two guys are both characters that when I first read them in The Death of Superman by Dan Jurgens, I didn't like them. Didn't like them at all. Mm-hmm. I thought they were dumb. I thought they were stupid. And was that the first time you encountered the, the characters? Yes. In a meaningful way? Well, yeah. It was the first time I ever encountered the characters ever because that was the first comic book I had ever read. Oh, so, sure. <laughs> and they're both, they're both in Death yeah, of Superman because yeah, yeah. they're both in the Justice League that fights Doomsday mm-hmm. that, gets their, that, gets, that gets their ass handed to them. Doomsday tears through the league. Doomsday puts... Ted Cord in the hospital in yep. critical condition. And I remember reading a post interview that they talked about killing Ted Cord, that having dooms they kill him. JK, we had to wait like 10 more years. Yeah, so we got it later. But Ted Cord's death actually in Infinite Crisis is very impactful. Mm-hmm. And Michael John Carter's journey over that, and especially when you see Michael John Carter's journey in his solo series, where a lot of his solo series is trying to convince Rip Hunter, let me go back in time and save Ted Cord. Yeah. And then that's how. Michael learns the lesson of I can't change time. It's fixed. Mm -hmm. Like he has to die. But 
It's funny that their relationship has become, I almost think, more beloved ever since he died mm-hmm. than it was before because we've seen it in other times. We've seen it in Batman Brave and the Bold. Mm-hmm. We've seen it in Just League Action now. We've seen it in in the Injustice it's 2 comic so book. It's so good in Injustice when Ted dies. Yes, and Ted dies there. And then that is the arc where we talked about where it kind of seems like they might be boyfriends. They might be lovers. They are in my head, Ganon. <laughs> so, um, and that is an interesting twist mm-hmm. that actually makes it a little bit sadder. Mm-hmm. And also there is another version in Smallville season 11. Mm-hmm. Ted Cord is Michael John Carter's boss. It works for oh, interesting. Booster Gold works. Booster Gold and Jaime, because they've been introduced in mm-hmm. Smallville continuity, they work for Ted Cord in Cord Industries. They're like his bodyguards. Oh, that's fun. So like there are lots of little connections, but they are two goofs that like truly, truly love each other. And that makes them the best duo. And again, they are also because Booster Gold is dumb. Yeah. Ted Cord is very much not dumb. Super smart. Ted Gore is super smart. So they help balance each other out. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're my number two. Cool. But Ashley, before we get to our number ones, mm-hmm. uh, I just want to remind everybody out there that I wrote a book. The book is called Super Soldiers, and it's currently available for pre-order because it releases June 15th. And I want to remind you, my book, uh, you know, of course, book sales and book sequels live and die on pre-order. So please help me climb the book to the number one release the day it comes out by pre-order on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and basically everywhere that sells books. Um, I want everybody listening right now to be able to read the first three chapters of the book before anyone else. And you get to see an exclusive video about my writing process, about writing the book and what characters I chose. And here's how you do this. If you pre-order the book at any buyer, you can buy it at a physical bookstore anywhere, screenshot or photo your purchase receipt, and then email that receipt to jasoninmanauthor at gmail.com with the subject line, here is Super Soldier's pre-order. I will then send you a personalized thank you message and a link to the exclusive video and the first three chapters. Now, this only applies to pre-orders in the month of April, so please hurry. And if you like Geek History Lesson, you like these histories, these are my histories, my versions of super soldiers, super characters, comic book characters that served in the military. So, Super Soldiers, it hits July 15th, excuse me, June 15th. Please pre-order the book, and I hope you enjoy it. So, there you go. Thanks, Super Friends. And uh, some of the, one of the characters we talked about in this episode, Jason writes about. We did? So, there. Hal Jordan. No, there you go. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> As the only person who's read the whole book, <laughs> let me assure you, there's a Hal Jordan chapter. Okay, there you go. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, let's move. We're now finally here. Number one, mm-hmm. the top number one. Who is Ashley? The best DC comic duo that's not named Batman and Robin. Well, you said you thought you knew who mine was, so who do you think you knew who mine was? I mean, I think it's Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad you made them your number two. They're so great. I love them so much. Why, why do you love them? And, 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 and we love them so much because we have the action figures of them, mm-hmm. the DC Universe classics, mm-hmm. and we have the exclusive uh, Funko Pops they made a couple years ago. Yeah, if someone wants to uh, make me a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle twin pillow set um, I will pay you for them I think that'd be great oh wow um, blue and gold come to mind for me right away when we were tackling this topic for IGHL discussion uh, I know people always like to make the argument that they're not A-list comic book characters but that's what I like about them it's kind of what I like about Bart Allen as well they're kind of screw up superheroes yeah um, they're both barely adequate mm-hmm. <laughs> at what they do but when they work together, they try a lot harder. Um, they're at the top of my list because they are stronger and better together. Their hearts are always in the right place. They're always doing their best for each other, and they're always doing their best for their teammates, which is why even when they fail, it doesn't bother me as much because they're so earnest about what they're doing. All of the best teams and all of the best duos are literary foils. A literary foil is a character that reflects um, or contracts another character's their flaws, their strength. Like Sherlock Holmes and John Watson, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold are two halves of a whole. Together they make a barely fully functional human being. And they're always still the dorkiest people in the room. I like something a little bit cheesy in my comic book characters. And I mentioned with Wally and Kyle and I mentioned with the Super Sense that I kind of like 
teams where they can sort of rib each other and they can be dorky and they can fight together. And there's nobody who does that more than Booster and Beetle. Um, JLA, JLI proves that they can be hilarious. That's the Bwahaha Justice League. Like yep. That's where the jokes come from. That's, that's where, the Keith Giffen run. Yes, that's where um, a lot of the cartoons get their heavy inspiration from. And Injustice 2, which Jason mentioned, um, proves the emotional length that they're willing to go to each other. And it proves that you can take these two characters, these two idiots. And I know I'm calling Ted an idiot and he's one of the smartest characters in the DC universe. He's a goof. But he just he's socially he's yeah. an idiot. Uh, you can take them and you can still tell a beautiful, deep emotional story with them. And it's not every character that you can do that with. You're not going to tell a story with Lobo that's going to move me to tears. No offense uh, to our Lobo fans. You just wait till I get the Lobo character. It's gonna, that bast- I, hope, I hope you do. <laughs> that Bastich is going to make you cry. No, we'll I, see on Krypton Season 2. <laughs> I, will, I will say that it's funny because Blue Beetle and Booster Gold have sort of become known for their friendship. Yes. They're, the they're most, defined by they're their defined relationship by to their each relationship other. They're defined by their relationship to each other, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I also think that that's why they need to be near the top of the list because they are, in a lot of ways, and that Booster Gold solo series is really great, the Dan Jurgens really one. Um, they're a little bit inextricable from each other. Because Ted Cord is all over that book. There, there's, mm-hmm. even, there's even, a, there's three or four arcs, and in that, that series ran for like 40 issues. Yeah. There's like two or three arcs where Booster travels back in time simply to team up with Ted. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Um, and just because they're so written together, they're so hard to separate, for me, they had to be number one. Even if they're not the biggest heroes on my list, even if they're not even the best at their jobs, they are the team that I think is best together. Uh, please, DC Comics, let me write a story where they're married and Jaime is their adopted child. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, oh. I, want it. I want them to uh, d- uh, train him. I want to do it so bad. Come over here, Jaime. Get on the slide. <laughs> no, you're, no, no, no. Come over here, Jaime. You're going to ride around on skeets. <laughs> and then he falls and Dad's is- like, what are you doing? Ske- He's their cat, and Jaime is their adopted child. Yeah. Okay, I got all right. I'm fine with that. And so, then they drive around at Archimedes, yeah, which is the bu- the bug, the bug, yeah, yeah. totally. I just call it Archimedes because that's a night owl's yes, ship. I I understood that mm-hmm. reference. Um, just want to make sure the audience did too. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, um, they were always going to be number one no matter oh, what. I I kind of figured. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jason. You put Superman and Batman at number three. Yeah. So who is your number one? Well, actually, I was putting this list together, Mm -hmm. and I was thinking about it, and Booster Gold and Blue Beetle almost became my number one. Yeah. Superman and Batman almost became my number one. But the more and more I thought about it, there is a duo in the DC Universe that has been in the DC Universe since the very beginning of kind of the DC Universe that a lot of people don't think of. As a duo, but mm-hmm. one of these characters would not exist without the other. Mm-hmm. I think the best DC comic duo of all time is Batman and R- Alfred. Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do either Batman and Alfred or Lois and Jimmy. Uh, no, I wasn't going to do Lois and Jimmy. I, I I tried to get Lois in this list several times, but she is such a singular character. She is, she's a very headstrong she's a force of will. individual. No, Batman and Robin. There would be... Batman and Alfred. Excuse me. Batman and Alfred. Excuse me. <laughs> I tried to do my own joke and it didn't work. Uh, Batman and Alfred. There would be no Batman without Alfred. Mm-hmm. Alfred diapered his bottom. Oh. Alfred is his ever-loving rock. Even when Batman dies, and we've seen that in the comic books, mm-hmm. Alfred carries on. And this all exists because Alfred is Bruce's father. He is his real father. They love each other. I mean, Superman says that. Yes. Uh, and even when Batman dies, Alfred says, forgive me, I'm mourning the loss of my, my son. son. Yeah. Uh, so Alfred is the emotional foundation of Batman. And the more and more I thought about it, I was like, you can't, there is no Batman without Alfred. Mm-hmm. And to me... I almost would make the argument that maybe Batman and Alfred are more important than Batman and Robin because Alfred is there before ba- before Robin ever shows up. Only by like two years. Sure, but <laughs> there would be no Batman You're not with, wrong. without Alfred. Yeah, yeah. And actually, Alfred shows up after Robin. Actually, continuity, continuity, all that yeah. Also, anyways, he's fat. Uh, yes, and he's fat, and he doesn't look anything like it. But. Modern day Alfred is still there. Uh, he is on his comms. He is sewing up his wounds. He is giving him plans for action. He's probably the only person in the DC universe that he could say something to Batman 
and it would emotionally wreck Batman. Mm-hmm. Like Alfred could say, "I think you're doing a terrible job," and Batman for the rest of the day would be like, "Oh God, I, I thought I was doing a good well, job." Could you imagine if Alfred told Bruce that he hated him? That has happened. I know it has, but but the impact of that statement yes. is pretty incredible. Well, Even that, more than when Dick says mm-hmm. that. There is a there is a time actually. There is a storyline. It's post Nightfall. When uh, Osriel has taken over, John Paul Valley has mm-hmm. taken over as Batman. Batman comes back after his back has been broken from Bane. Mm-hmm. He shows up and he immediately wants to dive into being Batman again. Or he's like, I'm going to do Batman again. And Alfred's like, are you crazy? Your back just broke. And Bruce is like, I'm going to do it. And Alfred's like, if you're going to ruin your entire body, I want Bye-bye. I want nothing to do with it. And he goes back to London. And That's there, a great storyline. There is a great storyline. Mm-hmm. Where it's is a, is a one shot special, and they collect it in, I believe, these new Nightwing trades, like Nightwing yes. Volume One, and it's called Nightwing Alfred's Return, mm-hmm. and it's where Nightwing goes to London to convince Alfred to come back, and you learn a little bit about Alfred's past. Alfred thinks he has a son, he finds out he doesn't have a son, but he he Alfred goes back to his old theater company, yep, and starts acting and stuff like that, and so when Alfred says things to Bruce. Bruce listens. Bruce listens more than even if Superman were to say something mm-hmm. to him because this is his dad. Yeah. And again, I go back to the idea that Alfred thinks that the concept of Batman is act- Alfred at first is like Batman's stupid. I'm going to I'm going to call the funny farm on you. Mm-hmm. And towards the end, he comes to see the value of it. And so much so that he carries on Batman's legacy post mm-hmm. Bruce. Like he helps yep. Dick keep going on as Batman, which I think is amazing. And it's funny because in that storyline, which is amazingly written by Grant Morrison, you learn that it was actually Alfred's idea that Dick becomes Batman. Yep. Dick doesn't want to do it. And Alfred's like, no, there has to be a Batman. Batman. It and means something. It means something to him. And it's very interesting. And also contrasting to him, I think one of the... Uh, best scenes in all of cinema history. I love this scene is in The Dark Knight when Bruce has decided to give up being Batman and he's burned on the stuff like that and they're walking out of the Batcave and uh, um, and uh, Alfred says something like he says something like, like oh I thought about calling the funny film on you years ago Master Bruce. I'm going to tell him all, it was your idea. Yeah, and Bruce goes I'm going to tell him it was all your or he's like oh I assume there would be consequences he's like I'm going to tell him it was all your idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes I think that's funny and then there's also the funny line in Batman Begins where Bruce comes back and Alfred goes well I declared you legally dead. Yeah. And, and he goes well you can take out the rolls if you want to make sure you bring it up gas step. Yeah. But- <laughs> Full of gas. Full of gas. Um, they are the best duo. Mm-hmm. It's Batman and Alfred because one does not exist. Unlike Superman, Batman does not exist without Alfred. And to me, that's what makes a duo uh, two parts of an equal whole. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Batman and Alfred. I I told you you were not going to predict my number one. No, that's a good choice. But when you think about DC Comics... That's the one I come down it to. It actually literally just occurred to me that the DC Trinity, none of them have um, nuclear families or traditional parents. They're all orphans, just like Disney princesses. Yeah. So, so yeah. Crazy. Okay, so uh, there you go. There are our choices. Uh, we're going to talk about some of our choices that didn't make the top five in our episode of Geek Extra Lesson Extra, which you can only hear on patreon.com slash Jawan. And we're going to also talk about, uh, as I said, why Batman and Robin mm-hmm. is the best DC comic duo. Go over there, be a member, support the show. And don't forget, if you go over there, you get to hear actually these episodes of Geek Extra Lesson early Heck yeah. just for helping to support us. Um, our recommended reading, actually, what's that? Recommended reading is where if you want to learn a little bit more about these characters, we will recommend some stuff for you to pick up. You get it at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You click on the widget, you buy the book. Amazon sends a little bit back our way to keep the lights on at the Mind University. And we have it going all the way back to episode zero. That's right. So if you're ever curious about some of the books we talked about, I can tar- guarantee you that there will be a Superman Batman trade on there for mine, and as well as a blue and gold yep. Booster Gold trade will be on there. So go over there, check that out. Uh, lastly, we're going to close out this episode with the honor roll, and that's if you go over to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review and you help promote us in the SEO of iTunes, we will read your review live on the air. It doesn't matter what it says, we're going to read it. Ashley, yes. who joins the Geek History Lesson Honor Roll this week? Today, we have two additions to the Honor Roll. The first is 
Ant Torres, who says, information overload in a good way. Such a great podcast. Having recently gotten back into comics, this is a perfect way to get to know characters I was always aware of, but never knew a whole lot about. Love the recommended reading. Every episode makes me aware of a story arc or an issue that I didn't know about. We will learn something every single episode and have a good share of laughs along the way. Oh, thank you, Ant Torres. I like to know that we're making people laugh, not yeah. just ourselves. <laughs> and in addition, they are also joined by S.T. Johnson, 82, maybe St. Johnson, who knows? Engaging and entertaining. Jason and Ashley host a great podcast for people like me who are interested in comics and comic characters, but feel like they're coming in too late to the game to know all the history. Oh, we still feel like that. Don't worry. Both engaging to listen to and have a dynamic flow that makes an hour fly by very quickly. I find their recommended reading list extremely helpful and find my comic wish list growing week by week. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you, ST Johnson82 and Aunt Torres. Welcome to the Teacher's Lounge. Jason, tell them what they can find here. Well, there's a giant bucket of oranges. Bucket. Yeah, in the corner of the teacher's lounge that was brought in uh, by Herbert Hoover. Not the president, <laughs> but Herbert Hoover. What does uh, Herbert Hoover teach again? He doesn't teach anything. He's the librarian. Oh. Come on now. Nice. You know that. Uh, thank you so much. If you want to join them and join the GHL honor roll, go over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review. Doesn't matter what you write. We will read it. That's true. And that's also where you can subscribe to this podcast as well as all the other places you can find podcasts. You can find us on Spotify and SoundCloud and iHeartRadio. And Ashley, if they want to suggest future lessons like this lesson, where can they do that? Well, they can do that at a whole bunch of places, including geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bunch of ways to contact us in all of those places. And... Please be sure to tag the official accounts, because if you just tag our personal accounts, we might not see your requests, and we want to see your requests. Mm -hmm. And thanks again to Jules Brown for giving us this awesome thing. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Jawin, that's J-A-W-I-I-N, and follow Ashley on Twitter for Ashley V. Robinson. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, because that's how you're going to get more news about the first ever Geek History Lesson live show. Again, May 5th at 5 p.m. at the Arena Cinema Lounge in Hollywood, California. You can get your tickets at arenascreen.com. Com. Um, I'm going to put this out there right now. Mm. If you come up to me at that live show and you say hashtag Alfred Rocks, <laughs> I'll give you a hug. Oh, nice. I'll give you a hug. It doesn't matter who you are. Also, come prepared to talk about uh, what your favorite episodes of Geek History Lessons are because I happen to know that our special guest Ryan Sands is also a fan Ooh. of the podcast. What if, I wonder if he comes up and goes hashtag Alfred Rocks. Ryan. You know what we're looking for. <laughs> uh, so now we're at the very end. Hashtag stick around, mm -hmm. the part where we uh, talk a little bit more to make sure you stick through all the plugs. Ashley! Yeah. Uh, why didn't you put Wonder Twins on your list? What's going on with that? Because uh, I know literally nothing about Wonder Twins. <laughs> they have except, a monkey. Except um, sometimes they turn into a bucket of water. One of them turns into water, any, um, any form of water, and one of them turns into an animal. Everything I know about Wonder Twins comes from the first issue of the new series. <laughs> Um, by Mark Russell. I mean, that's and pretty Stephen on the ball. Byrne. Yeah. Um, but that's it. Like, I know nothing about Wonder Twins, so I don't. I didn't feel they were literally never in contention. Uh -huh. Also, I'm gonna be honest. I consulted a number of other lists just to make sure that I wasn't missing um, any important ones, and they were on nobody's. Oh, the Wonder Twins. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I'm gonna say this. Uh, Mark Russell is probably going to uh, allow them to enjoy a new era of critical success, not unlike the Flintstones. Sure. Person I have been most spooked to meet in comics, Mark Russell. <laughs> How did this become the Mark, <laughs> the Mark Russell corner? Because <laughs> everything I know about Wonder Twins comes from Mark Russell. You know, um, I briefly considered putting on my list, uh, just to give you a little little touch of this, uh, Power Girl and Huntress. Interesting. I briefly considered Barbara and Jim Gordon. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I briefly considered Jim Gordon a Batman. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. The more interesting yeah. things are when they teach you so lecture. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that has been it for this episode <laughs> of Geek History Lesson. I have been Jason, Mr. Friendly Inman. That's, have, a, that's a lost reference. Okay, you've been Ashley Victoria That's Robinson. a lost reference. <laughs> no, it's not. Professor Jason, please dismiss the class. Master Wayne, I have drew you a bath, and now it's time to go take a bath. Thank you for listening. This has been a bad Alfred impression. <laughs>